Hello guys and welcome here to another episode in more sport international in Romanian culture cars. My name is Baku Vlad Andrew. I'm here with Bert Longin. Hello, Bert. Hello, hello. Bert Longin, GT driver, will tell us a couple of secrets about his more sport career, how he started more sport career, uh, results, achievements, and other stuff like that. Bert, let's start with a little describe about you. Yes, so my name is Bert Longin. I drove uh, now at this point 50 no, sorry, 29 years of racing. So um, I'm driving my last race next weekend in Belgium. I started up in Belgium 29 years ago as an amateur driver. I end up on a professional driver and I end my career on the same place in Zolder on 13 October. So it will be quite emotional. But anyway, um, it's time to stop. I feel it. I still can win races, but I I like the people to remind me as a winning driver. So I don't want to race and be not fast enough to win races. So that's the reason why I stop. All right. So how you start the, the more sport career? Who is the people or who? what is your favorite driver to convince you to start motorsport career as a role model? Yeah, to, to be honest, from I was a small kid, I remember four, five, six years, I was very um, interested in motor racing. But everybody knows motor racing is complicated. And normally you have to come from a rich family. And it's not me. So... I was always interested, but it were, there was no possibility. Then I was quite lucky from a rich guy who had a race car that I spoke to. And he said to me, come over to the racetrack solder. I give you a test. You can do it because I was so passionate speaking about racing. And the first test was very good. And he said immediately to me, I'm going to help you. So that was the start um, from my racing career. But in the beginning, when I was really young, from until I think 12, 13 years, until 19 years, I was driving motocross because that was less expensive. That was also possible to do in an amateur way, like with, with a second-hand bike, on a local track to do competition. It was possible, it was payable. But then my interest was always in the cars. And then I had the lucky shot from the test. And so I, I started my race career. All right, all right. Um, in your career, what is your, um, what is your favorite driver? What is your uh, driver uh, as a big rival? And uh, what is your friend's driver, like I say? Yeah, so the biggest driver where I was inspired by was Ayrton Senna. It was no, not only about his speed, but it was for me also the person. He was very, very straightforward, honest. He could not handle when it was politics and when it was bullshit. He was very, very angry on that point. So that I like, it was honest. So that's the first thing. Then um, as drivers where I look um, look to, it was like Tom Christensen, uh, Mr. Le Mans. But to be honest, there are a lot. Like when I was driving in GT, in GT1, when I was driving the Corvette with Anthony Kumpen and, and Mike Hesemans, it was he was also dominant on that point. It was Andrea Bertolini. It was Marcel Fessler. I drove a lot with Stefan Ortelli. Like I drove with Felipe Albuquerque, um, Andre Lotterer, Marc Lieb. Yeah, there are so many drivers. And you get inspired about them in two things, how what's their speed and talent and how they approach the sport. So I'm pure sport athlete. 
from from I was born until now. So my idea in sport is always when you are talented, you can win races and you are honest, no politics, then that's my driver or my athlete or somebody I can look to. All right, all right. What do you recommend for a rookie or next generation driver? Uh, what do you recommend as uh, starting with? With uh, which competition, which car, which events? And of course, if you recommend it to start with with, with uh, national uh, model or international model, role model, so, sorry. Yes, it, it's, uh, it's like motorsport is complicated. But there are two things who are the most important. It's talent and passion. When you get these two together, you have a chance. You don't have to be rich. Because otherwise the game is not on. When when you got when you are normal, like the most people, you got talent and you got the passion and you've got the strength in your head, it's very important, then you can make a career. But what I see now and it's important to to tell young drivers is don't push yourself too quick in big international series start up local when you can win there go to national when you can win there normally already when you are national people see you they know it's a talented girl or or guy Then normally you get support. Then you can go to Europe. And there, when you are in Europe and you can win in Europe, then you can be a professional driver. But what I've seen now many times is they go too quick. Too quick. It's it's they they always think I have to be a professional driver when I'm 20 because they look at Formula One. Okay, I skip I skip Formula One. That's exceptional talented normally, but also as a professional GT or touring car driver in the world, you can have a professional contract when you are 25. My first professional contract was on 28. 28, I was 28. And my last was on 48 with Audi Sport. So it means Don't hurry up. Analyze good that you have the strength, the talent to win because you have to win. That's the core business. And when you can win in pro local races, national races, European races, you have a chance. All right, all right. So um, now let's talk about a serious, uh, a serious phrase, uh, long, uh, Bert. Sorry, Longin Bert. <laughs> uh, in more, more sport in my country has been promoted by two phrases. Street is not circuit and champions are in circuit, not in the street. To tell us people for the first time who watching my interview, the people who watching me already, other interview will tell what I'm talking about. In your opinion, what do we have to do to convince people to come on events and track this? And what can we do to stop uh, street racing? First of all, you need a track. Is there in Romania an, a track that you can not a, a street track like like it was in Bucharest? In Bucharest was the race. Eh? Is is there in Romania uh, a race track who is available? A close race track is the is is one yes, there? Yes, yes, yes. We have two: one in Motor Park Romania and uh, another one called uh, Transylvania Motoring. So we have two oh. local tracks. So. That's already very good. I didn't know, to be honest. But, you know, motorsport at this point is on a very um, high level. It means I'm 29 years in the sport. So I saw top years, low years with no, not enough spectators, not enough uh, drivers and teams. But now at the moment we are on the top of it. And the explanation is... Two, three things. It's the Netflix series from Drive to Survive. It's a worldwide television, uh, yeah, like like a television show that, for example, old people can see it, 
very young people can see it with their mom or dad. And from that point on, there was coming a new fan base on the racing all over the world. Like I can see it in Belgium now. You see young families, mama, daddy, kids from five until 15 who come to visit the national races again. Like 10 years ago, it didn't exist anymore. So that's a very good sign. I think also Max Verstappen as an icon, as a quick icon, aggressive driver with Red Bull brings a lot to new fans all over the world for motorsport. That's the first thing. The second thing is that like national series or drivers like me, we have to keep in mind that we have to promote any way we can the sport that we like it's a part of the it's a part of the job so we have to be quick in qualifying we have to be we have to win races we have to convince companies to invest in our sport but the last thing and it's one of the most important things is how you speak to your fans how you let grow your fan base it means somebody from 80 somebody from five you have to speak with them and like now on all the socials that exist you have to use it on the maximum way because there is a lot of concurrence we have football we have bike racing. Like in Belgium, we have two principal sports. It's football and bikes. I'm, I'm 29 years in cars. And I always promote the way that I can. Always my sport. I will be like for an interview with cyclers together. So we have a cycler, we have a footballer, we have a tenniser, and we have a race driver. And I will speak about my, my sport. So it's a responsibility from the athlete, me as a driver, to promote my sport on a very positive way. All and right. That's that's the, the advice that I can give to young drivers. Work on that also. All right. So yeah, guys uh, come on uh, come to see racing because uh, uh, probably we will be so much uh, excitement and that's for sure the more sport community increasing from year to year uh, from young to old people and of course everyone is welcome to support us to watching our racing to see close cars because probably you will see on the on tv but tv is not like uh, you see face to face the the race car and the drivers your favorite drivers as well so yeah, come to see guys racing and uh, let's see how it goes the 2025 and of course the rest of 2024 to see what's uh, what's going on and of course what is the the next plan for for everyone in this uh, sport. Uh, Bert, before we end the interview and thank you so much to accept my uh, my invitational guys. If you want to contact him, I will let you all social media in description. If you want to contact Bert Longin, if you don't uh, contact him on social media in the comment section down below, you have a Q and A session and you can ask him about every, everything about his motorsport career, results, achievements, and other other things like that. So before we end the interview, a message for fans, for motorsport fans, from team fans, from national fans, and others. Can you repeat the question? Uh, a message, a message for fans. Ah, yeah, okay. So uh, the message is that what what I see um, when people come to a racetrack with with kids, they are always very enthusiastic. Also, women like car racing. It's a technical sport, and it's an easy way to visit racetracks. What I see is people always think, oh, racing is like an elite sport event and we cannot come close to teams or drivers. And it's 
completely opposite. Not in the Formula One, but what we do, like in GT racing, national or international, you can see, you can touch the driver. You can nearly touch the car. So, for all the fans, when you are somewhere in the country, there is a race not so far from your home. Visit the race. Speak with drivers. Speak with team owners. Ask them to visit the box. Normally, they will, they will, they will give you a go because they are, there is no, no, no such thing as it's forbidden. Just speak with them. You can see the car, you can touch the car, you can see the driver, you, you, can, you can speak to the driver, ask them posters, sign cards, they always have, and you will be surprised how close you can be in a race team. You, yes. will, you will remember it for your whole life. All right, all right. So, of course, the other words, like I say, is uh, come to see racing, come to see drivers, come to see teams, come to see this more sport community and join uh, join us, uh, this uh, community as well. Uh, Bert, thank you so much to, to accept my invitational. It's been a pleasure for me to talk a driver like you. Of course, 29 uh, years as racing, your uh, next week will gonna be your last race. So uh, it's hard, it's hard to, to watch. But uh, we will watch that race and, of course, uh, we will remember um, every every moment with you and, of course, with Tim and uh, other stuff like that. And, of course, let's see let's see 2025 how it goes for you and for the team and uh, to see other drivers, of course, uh, like you, to come racing and uh, uh, support, of course, this, uh, this type of sport, this sport, these disciplines, whatever. And, uh, yes, guys. Thank you so much, guys, to accept uh, my invitation uh, here in More Sport International. I um, let you an invite for bad launching to invite other people here in More Sport International. So if you want to, if you want to come and join uh, join this interview, this type of interview, contact Bert. After that, he will contact me and we will set a day and time to tell us your story, your achievements, results, and much more. And guys, until next time, I'm back with Vlad Andrew. With me was Bert Longin. Thank you so much, Bert. Please. I have one thing. I have one thing to say. Please. I will not. I will not drive anymore. But I will there. I will be there as a team manager. So okay. I will be on the racetrack for the next ten years. No problem. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for this. <laughs> for these words, guys. Until next time, I'm back, Vlad Andrew. With me was Bert Longin. Remember, guys, street is not circuit. You are the best, and let's go racing. Vroom.